Smart pointers in Rust are simple. You have the one that cats like to play in, you have the one that can be used to control toy cars, and you have the one that can be used to survive a great flood. And then there's this one, which frankly I'm too scared of to make a joke about. Seriously though, to be an effective Rust developer, you need to understand the different smart pointer types. They can get a little tricky, but if we keep our examples simple, we can cover the core concepts pretty quickly. The one common thing across all the smart pointers that we're going to talk about in this video is that they dictate that data should be stored on the heap instead of the stack. And I'll get more into what that means in a bit. The first one we're gonna talk about is box. Box is the simplest smart pointer in Rust. Its only purpose is to dictate that the enclosed data needs to be stored on the heap instead of the stack. Other than that, it functions pretty much like a borrowed reference. Let's look at two of the most common use cases for using box. So imagine we have a trait called vehicle that has one method called drive that takes a borrowed reference to self. And then we have a struct called truck that'll implement vehicle and we're gonna implement just the, that drive method. And all it's gonna do is print out the truck is driving. Super simple setup here. What if we want to create a variable of type vehicle? And we're not gonna initialize it right away for the purposes of this example. On line 14, we're gonna do let t, and then on the second line, we're gonna assign t a value. So t equals truck. And then we're gonna do t.drive. Let's see what happens here. Okay, we have some errors here. So trait objects must include the dine keyword. That's kind of outside the scope of this video, but in this video, anytime we reference a trait, we need to prefix it with dine. So we fixed that error. What else do we have? The size for values of type dine vehicle cannot be known at compilation time. The trait size is not implemented for dine vehicle. In an ideal world, you'd have everything on the stack because the stack is much faster than the heap in terms of access time. The problem is, in order to store something on the stack, the Rust compiler needs to know the size of that memory at compilation time. And in this case, anything could implement vehicle and each of the implementations of vehicle could be a different size. So the compiler has no way of knowing or computing the exact size needed in the stack for that memory. The only solution here is to store it on the heap, which unfortunately has a much slower access time. So you wouldn't want to actually store things on the heap if you don't need to. But in this case, we do need to. And the way we do that is by using box. So we've enclosed the vehicle type in a box. And then on line 15, we're calling box colon colon new and we're passing in the new truck that we want to create. Okay, let's see if this runs. Truck is driving. Okay, we're good. So that's one of the two use cases for using box. The other use case for box is for recursive types. What if we want to be able to represent a list of trucks? So we have like a line of trucks waiting in at a stoplight or something. We can add a field, uh, next truck. It's going to be optional because the list has to end at some point. So option uh, truck. Delete what we have in main. Okay, we have an error here. What is it? Recursive without indirection. It says insert some indirection, i.e. box, rc, or ampersand. So this is the other use case for box. So all we need to do is enclose truck in a box. And that gets rid of the error. So just to recap, the two main use cases for box are number one, when we have a variable with a trait type that can't be computed at compile time, we could use a box there. The second use case is recursive data types. So for example, if we have a struct and one of the fields of that struct is the struct that it's enclosed in. So with box and regular Rust variables, the memory that variable refers to is gonna be cleaned up as soon as it goes out of scope. What if you have a situation where you wanna have multiple references to some memory, but you're not really sure about the order in which those references are gonna go out of scope, and you want that memory to stay around until the last reference goes out of scope? Well, that's exactly what RC is meant for. RC stands for reference counting, so it's gonna count the number of references to that memory, and it's gonna keep that memory alive until the last reference goes out of scope. One good example of this is if we have some structure and we want to reference that structure to be stored in multiple data structures. And we're not really sure which data structure is gonna go out of scope or what's gonna be done with that data structure. But we do know that we want that memory to be deallocated if there's no references to it remaining. Let's look at an example of this. Going back to that truck structure, we're going to delete the next truck field and we're gonna add a field called capacity. And it's just gonna represent how much that truck can hold. And then in main, say we want to create three different types of trucks representing the different sizes. So we have a small truck, a medium truck, and a large truck. So we have these three trucks of different capacities, and now we wanna make two shipping facilities, and each shipping facility is represented by a list of the trucks available at that shipping facility. Totally contrived, but we're gonna go with it. So we have facility one, and that's gonna be have a vector of um, truck A and truck B. And then facility two, 
facility one is gonna have truck A and B, and facility two is gonna have truck B and C. So we're already getting an error here, and it's because truck B is referred to twice. Because the first time we're referring to truck B, its ownership is changing to this vector. So the vector now has ownership of that truck B, and then we're trying to refer to it again to make the second vector. You could get around this by using regular borrows, assuming you only need a read-only reference to this. Problem with that approach is that the main function has to maintain ownership of truck B, and then truck B would get deallocated when the main function is done, even if we stop needing truck B long before that. So the way we can solve this with our RC is to make an RC out of each of these. So we still have an ownership problem after making these into RCs, but we can actually clone these RCs without worrying about the underlying data being cloned as well. So if I do RC clone here, pass in a reference to the RC that I'd like to be cloned, the second element of the first vector points to the same memory as the first element of the second vector. So we didn't actually make a copy of the underlying structure, we just have two pointers that point to the same thing. The setup is good because main no longer owns truck B, and we have two vectors. We're not sure what's going to happen with these vectors. Maybe they're going to be deallocated, maybe they're going to be modified, but we can be confident with this setup that once all the vectors that contain truck B are deallocated, or all the truck Bs in all the vectors are removed for whatever reason, truck B memory will be deallocated. So this is very memory efficient in that sense. And the main function doesn't need to maintain ownership of truck B. Let's print out these vectors and see what we get. We need to implement debug here. So we get what we expect. Facility 1 has truck A and truck B. Facility 2 has truck B and truck C. So we passed a clone of truck B to facility 1, and we passed ownership of the actual truck B RC to facility 2. And because we're using RC, it doesn't matter which one of these we deallocate first. So we could deallocate facility 2, and I'm going to use uh, memdrop to do that. Uh, if you're not familiar, memdrop is basically does the exact same thing as making that variable go out of scope. So I'm just using memdrop to make it easier to see here. And so we passed the original RC to facility two, and we dropped facility two, which had the original RC. So we want to be confident that facility one still refers to truck B. So let's make sure that's the case. Okay, facility two still has a valid reference to truck B after dropping facility one. And the reason that is, is because the reference count for that RC didn't go to zero. So that memory was not deallocated. One useful function when dealing with RCs is called strong count. And that gives you the exact count of references that that RC has at the moment. To show you how that works, I need to actually maintain a reference to truck B in the main function. Well, I'm gonna actually add RC clone to all these. Because I've called RC clone for all these trucks, now the main function still maintains ownership of all the trucks, and I can refer to those trucks to call the strong count function. So we're gonna look at the strong count before and after the drop. Okay, so the count before the drop was three, and that's because, why is it three instead of two? Well, the main function has one reference to truck B. So that's here, and then that's number one, and then facility one has a reference to it, that's two, and then facility two has a reference to it, that's three. That's why the strong count is three. And then after the drop, facility two is gone, and the only references are from the main function and facility one. Just to reiterate, we can delete facility one first and have facility two around, doesn't matter the order in which we deallocate those references, RC will keep the memory around as long as it's needed. Now, what if we created these smart pointers, truck A, B, and C, and we want to hand them off to another thread for some reason? So we'll call thread spawn and actually construct facility one and two in a thread and then join on that thread. So we'll get the facility one and two as results and then continue printing as we did before.
So we're trying to pass these smart pointers off to another thread and we're getting an error here. What does it say? RC of truck cannot be sent between threads safely. The trait send is not implemented for RC truck. Okay, what does that mean? So the send trait is implemented by any data structure that is safe to be sent to other threads. RC does not implement send, but there is another smart pointer called ARC that does implement send. And ARC stands for atomic reference counted. So why would you not use ARC for everything? Well, ARC has some additional overhead and it doesn't actually use locks or mutexes or anything like that. It actually uses something called atomic data types, which the compiler knows how to order such that things are thread safe. And the details of how that works are a little bit elusive. It's pretty complicated, so I won't explain that here. But what you need to know is that it doesn't actually use locks. But atomic data types are never quite as efficient as the non-atomic equivalents because in the non-atomic case, not needing thread safety enables the compiler to perform more optimizations. So you wouldn't want to use ARC just whenever. You definitely only want to use it when you actually need it. So let's try converting all these RCs to ARC and see what happens. So we'll import ARC and then change all these to ARC. Okay, looks like that error went away. So we can see that arc actually allows us to pass a reference to another thread, but we have this other error down here with truck B and that's because we actually gave ownership of truck B to the thread. So if we wanna retrieve truck B again, we can just pull it from, or we can do a clone on it from facility two or one. Uh, let's, so, so let's do that. Okay, so now we have truck B again. So let's run this to make sure it works. Again, similar to the last example with RC, the difference is the facility one and facility two vectors are being constructed in a separate thread. And then the results, we're calling join in the main function, which is getting the results and printing out as we did before. Yep, looks like it works. And everything else is pretty much the same as the last example. So that's the atomic reference counting smart pointer. Because I was too scared to come up with a joke about it, I couldn't cover ref cell in this video, but let me know if you'd like to see a video about that. I hope this has helped you understand Rust smart pointers a little bit better. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.